G'day everyone, it's Jerry here from Suckle and Fly Traps, your carnivorous plants nursery. Recently there have been quite a few purchases of Venus's fly traps from my online shop, from my valued customers, and I've been getting quite a few inquiries regarding basic care guidelines, you know, inquiries about making sure that everything's okay with their plant. So in this video, I'll be covering the basics regarding caring for your Venus's fly trap, making sure that your plant is healthy, um, at least that will give you some sort of confidence knowing that you know your plant is okay at home. In this video I'll also give you the opportunity to compare the way my plants are growing to the ones growing for you at home. So if you haven't already done so please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more interesting carnivorous plants videos. Okay so this is a flyover of my Venus's fly traps in all their glory. These Fly traps here are called G16 times G14. It's a hybrid Slax Giant versus a cross with a Dirk Renthams Giant, that's their name. They're characterized by having these vertical leaves, as you can see now. And that's a sign that they're well and truly awakening out of their winter dormancy. It is late October now, we've had plenty of warm weather, so these plants have well and truly received the signal that, yep, it's. Uh, time to start catching flies and we're going to start bringing up our traps. Now if you bought this variety from me, I know that a lot of you have, then you should start to see these vertical leaves coming up. Now you may see some old leaves there around the center of your rhizome. That's perfectly normal because that's last season's growth. It's perfectly normal for the leaves to die back what is important is that those older leaves are being replaced with new growth, as you can see right here. So that's one variety. This is another variety. How good is this? This is a shark's tooth, Venus's fly trap. Look at those teeth around those traps. I haven't got enough of those yet, but uh, in the next couple of years I should have some, and uh, I'm sure they'll be nice and popular. So we're just going along here. These ones over here with their short shorter leaves this is a big mouth variety i know quite a few have bought those as well so rather than having vertical growth then those leaves tend to just grow horizontally onto the peat moss that's the way they grow so i don't think there's anything wrong with them if you see that again if you do see old leaves around the center of your rhizome that's perfectly normal just so long as those older leaves are being replaced with new growth and that's how the new leaves start off they come up with like a semicircle and as they unfold the teeth start to form where are they the steep the teeth start to form around the traps as you can see right here and eventually that will open up now these basic care guidelines i'm giving you is for outdoors so i'm assuming you're growing your plants outdoors when it comes to catching insects you don't have to feed them they feed themselves okay so they're unbelievable when it comes to attracting all sorts of insects, not only flies, but cockroaches. I've got them on my videos on my YouTube channel, so have a look at that if you want. But yeah, they're just amazing. I mean, after all, they have evolved to catch insects, so yeah, just let them be when it comes to catching dinner for themselves. Now, if you bought bare-rooted rhizomes, then you would have freshly potted your plant uh, I'm assuming that you bought the peat moss from me. Um, it's exactly the same peat moss that I grow my plants in, so you know it's good for your plants. If not, that's perfectly normal as well. It's all right. Just make sure that you hydrate your plant very well after potting them, after freshly potting them, okay? That's because those rhizomes have been out, outside of their potting medium, normal potting medium, during transit. And the best way to make them comfortable is to just sit the tray or sit the pot in a tray of water like you can see right here that will make sure that that peat moss stays nice and damp keeping your plant happy now you'll probably see here that i've cut off some of these flowers flower stalks now you can leave them on there i don't tend to leave them on there look if you've bought one for your first time and you want to see what they look like it's it's fine perfectly fine just let them develop They've got these nice, beautiful white flowers. 
However, because I vegetatively grow my plants, I just allow them to grow and then I simply separate them, put them in different pots. I don't really uh, look for the flowers. So that's why I cut them off. They do tend to sap a bit of energy out of your plant, but it's perfectly normal for the flower to grow and it's okay to let them grow if you want. Now, in terms of sunlight, these plants here are getting around about seven hours of direct sunlight every day. That ensures that these traps, well, depending on your variety, but a lot of these big mouth varieties, they've got these very deep red traps, and you can see that right here. They're really developing nicely. And talking about red traps, look at this one over here. Not only is that trap a deep red, but even the teeth are. So it's just amazing just how vibrantly coloured some of these fly traps are. Um, now, on my website, on my, in my growing guides, I do say four hours of direct sunlight. Um, that's an absolute minimum. If you can give them more, the better. As a general rule, the more sunlight you give them, the healthier they'll be. Now, when I say sunlight, I mean, I mean direct sunlight, like you can see right here, okay? So the sun literally shining onto them directly. So we've covered water, uh, we've covered sunlight, um, I know some of you from Queensland have bought my plants. I know it's been quite uh, warm up there, so that's even more important for these trays to be watered at all times, just to make sure that they, that peat moss doesn't dry out. Now here in Sydney, it hasn't been so warm. You can get away with having your pot sitting in these trays and not having water in there for a couple of days before rewatering. That's because that peat moss won't dry out so quickly due to the lower temperatures okay uh, right let's just do another fly over here uh, I think that's about it everyone um, hopefully I've given you a few tips some basic care guidelines giving you a bit of confidence to know that your plants okay at least if you know that the bakes have been uh, the basics have been covered then <clears throat> you have a little bit more confidence okay so until then everyone Happy growing for the season ahead.